Hi, my name is Tony Israel, founder and CEO of Real Men Productions. I'm here today to introduce our new series, The Blueprint Series. It is going to be inspiring, fantastic, place to go to see everything theater, to be inspired, to be encouraged. I'm here to introduce our first series. Hey everyone, it's Glitter. What's going on? I want to just thank everybody to donate to Africa Everything. I wanted to show you guys what we've been doing with the donations. We have made some headway. We've done renovations on two schools, one in Kumasi and one in Eastern Region, Pres BB and Diamond State Academy. And I want to show you guys what we've been doing, okay? So right away, as soon as the donations came in, about a week or two later, we sent the money to Ghana to get the, the work going so the kids could have a brand new school when they came back from school. The kids said, oh, my floors are broken, my windows are broken, my, my, my school needs paint, we need things done. We got it done, guys. And without any further ado, check out the video of what was before and what happened after. The last two buildings. Look at our floor, it is damaged. Africa is everything we need support. Each human being deserves a place to call their own Yet so many of the journey far from home Little children in the darkness all alone Seeking freedom It's about time we break those borders down There's too much segregation We're all a part of one nation yeah. We need to break those borders down there's too much separation We're all one in creation yeah. Yeah. What do you feel when you see those ugly faces? People of all ages locked up in a kid Welcome, guys, to the Blueprint Series by Realm In Productions. My name is Aisha Diori. I am your community partner, guest host today. I'm so excited because I have a really, really exciting get, um, guest. But before I talk about my guest, let me tell you a little bit about Africa Everything. Africa Everything is an organization where I'm the executive director of. We started about six years ago with creatives that came together to raise money to help build schools, 
get supplies and help kids in growing and getting out of their getting out of a rut when it comes to learning in West Africa. So so far we've um impacted about four or five different countries and we plan on impacting all 15 countries. Today it's not about Africa everything. It's about Gavin. <laughs> Our special guest today is Gavin <laughs> from the New York Theater Workshop. Gavin, how are you doing? I am doing great. How are you, Aisha? Fine, Gavin. Why are you such an exciting guest? I need to know a little bit more Duh. about you. Tell well, me what yeah. you do, why you do it, and why you're so excited. <laughs> well, my name is Gavin Dai Trinidad. He, they, I am a New Yorker, born and raised in the Lower East Side, and I am just stoked to be with you. I am the Community Engagement Associate at the New York Theater Workshop. A little bit of the lowdown about the workshop. It is a 40 year old institution in the East Village and we have pioneered and really, um, really supporting emerging artists throughout all four decades of our history. Some you may know, and we were the original presenters of Rent, Hades Town, What the Constitution Means to Me, Peter and the Star Catcher, you know, so the, you know, the things that bring in the good vibes. Yes, um, but love it. <laughs> and, you know, we, we try as much as we can to really, um, really put center the artist's voice because we believe that it's their voice that really brings in the issues that we need to talk about in community. And in addition to our shows with artists such as Celine Song, Jeremy O'Harris, Rachel Chapkin, Aeneas Mitchell, Liliana Padilla, and Victor I. Cassidis, we also do free educational programs that are intergenerational throughout the city, trying to put into the center the giving them the autonomy to tell their own stories and help them remember that, you know, they're just not audience members coming in to see a show. They are stakeholders in the future of our theater. It's truly the, the people, the community that help us continue to do our work. And without the local community in the Lower East Side, East Village, and throughout the city, I believe as an artist, um, we, it's hard to find a purpose in, in our work. It really takes an entire family to come together. Yeah. And in getting this family together, first of all, you didn't talk a little bit about your dramaturg. What is that? Explain oh, that to me, yeah. a dramaturg. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I, I'm happy to tell you because I got my MFA in this. Yeah, tell us what it is. Get, get, your, get your flowers, honey. Get your flowers. Um, so a dramaturg is uh, it's a collaborator in an artistic room in which they help the process of developing new work. And it could come in many different ways. It can be someone who brings in history and context. So I got my academic in me, but it also someone who could really bring in stimuli to help the artists around to really think very closely what kind of art they want to make, how they want to be a discourse with artists, how they want to use the space, um, how they want to write a story. And so I come in and I help do this humongous puzzle piece to bring in all of the collaborators to create a shared language. And oh, so you're a magician. Oh yeah, I like I. And so when I do art, I always tell people, "Oh, I'm casting spells, so I have to use my words wisely." I love that. I love that. So that means you have a huge theater background. I want to know more about your theater background. Well, I I didn't start in theater the way people typically start. I uh, I grew up in the Lower East Side, uh, raised by immigrant parents from the Philippines. And, you know, for many folks uh, or in my community, the first kind of performance that I'll speak for myself, I remember is in church. So it's like singing in the choir, going to mass, listening to a sermon and, you know, just singing every Sunday. And so that was where I first like truly learned. And then growing up in New York, you know, you got people in the subway performing you got people on the streets performing. And so for much of my life, that to me was performance, that was theater. And later on, I, I had the opportunity, people gave me the opportunity to go see a show at Radio City or like on Broadway, um, just lucky enough that I had those opportunities and something just stuck in me where the moments on the street and in church and then also in this theater all came together and I kept thinking, oh, I want to be part of that. And so 
I yeah. love that. I love. Could you give us a little, a little, a little see of her? Could you give me just a little something, a little oh, something? Okay, okay. Her? So, um, so my name is Gavin Rise with Raven. So when I usually meet someone, and just to explain how to how to pronounce my name, I usually say. That so Gavin is the future I can see. And so hey! like, <laughs> once you get to know me, um, I got I I love jazz. And so you know, I could do like they say into your early life romance came. The heart of yours burned a flame, a flame Ooh! that flickered away and died away. So yeah, and I used to live in Memphis, you, so I got some of the blues there in me too. So right. I, I really love. I music was always playing in my household. So you you yeah. sing as well as act. You do both. I Thank do. You. I do. Yeah. <laughs> once in a while, it's once in a while. But I truly, I truly love my my role as a community engagement associate. I also love my role. Um, I love my role as a dramaturg. I first came into dramaturgy because I didn't see enough people who looked like me on stage. And so I learned that as a dramaturg, I can advocate for those people behind the stage. Absolutely. Because if I help develop the work, then I'm in the DNA of the work, no matter what. So it's my way of, and also all of my mentors, all of my mentors have been folks of color who have also chimed in thinking and like really believing in the work of social justice and advocating for representation on and off stage and the importance. Because at the end of the day, you know, that 10 year old kid in the audience, when they don't see themselves represented, they lose something or they feel something is missing. And I don't want that, like, because I felt that. And so I did not. I do not want that for anyone else. And so as much as I can, I think of that 10 year old kid when I do theater and think, well, who needs to be on stage for this to yeah. feel truthful? Um, yeah. Affirm the existence of folks. So we have uh, the 10 year old in us always lives with us no matter what. So, yeah. So and kind of like in going in that, you know, and, and making sure we engaging people of color into what it is that's going <laughs> on and being a part of the theater magic. Tell us a little bit about New York State Theater Workshop, about the upcoming project that I'm so excited about. Tell us a little bit about that and what's going on and what you guys do, because I really want to know more. And I'm sure everybody else wants to, too. Yeah, of course. So New York Theater Workshop has many ways of engagement with our hyper hyper local community and our community um, in in all five boroughs of New York. And also because of the magic of Zoom, we have also created engagement, meaningful engagement all throughout the country. Absolutely. And so that has been an amazing and actually really, really touching experience I had have yet to actually vocalize. And so first, um, of course, when you come to a theater, you expect to see shows. And so with that said, we work very, very closely with our artists asking who needs to be in the room, who they want to be in discourse with, and who, for whom did they write this play for? Because without, the, without that community, the play, one, loses its meaning. Two, there is something larger of the play that the artist, in their voice, wants to vocalize. It's not just entertainment, it's discourse. There's something about life that they want to talk about. And so I work with them and the local nonprofits to make sure that happens. Yeah. And, and so, for example, for Dreamings and uh, Senzile, we're actually working with Africa Everything. And so we're collaborating and making sure that the folks who are represented on stage are also in the audience. And we've created this new program called For the Culture, which was... Yeah, it was created with a team and your theater workshop. And we're trying to think like what kind of culture we wanted to create at the workshop and also its larger meaning. You know, for many of us, like for communities of color, when we have been like, for example, I'll use myself, like much of my experience is to fit in within the systems of white supremacy. I had to erase myself. And so what does it mean to rebuild a culture that I felt I lost, right? And with that comes community because you can't do it alone. And so the For the Culture series is bringing in folks from all walks of life, the communities for whom the piece is created, and to have dialogue. So they see the show 
And then we have the questions of what is the conversation afterwards to then move what we have in the show outside. So one of the biggest goals for For the Culture is, is to imagine, the, to bring together the world that we want outside of the theater and the world that is on stage. And where do those two meet? Exactly. Because they can't be separate. If we want a show to be impactful, if we want the art to really mean something, it has to travel. Exactly. And so we're creating these events in which people from all walks of life and different accessibility points can come together, see the show, and then have discourse. And that could be in post-show talkbacks. We're also reaching out, of course, using social media in different ways to just create entry points for folks in different ages. We're also doing events outside of talkbacks. We're having like open mic nights on the streets of 4th Street. So we're located in the East Village on 4th Street between 2nd and Bowery, which is known as the 4th Arts Block. Mm. And, you know, when you got people singing jazz live in the middle of the street and you got people dancing and hollering, just being community, that to me is the center of my work as a community uh, engagement person. I'm bringing people together and realizing the beauty of art. Um, and so that's part of the For the Culture series. And we're doing this not just for this upcoming show, but all the shows going forward. And we started with our last show, Alicia Harris's play on Sugarland, And it was a success um, for, for, the, for the culture. And we're just really excited to keep going. What, what, do, you have, what do you have cooking though? There's something oh, cooking okay. in, in the kitchen. I need to know what you, you're brewing in the kitchen, darling. Yeah. So, <laughs> This amazing musical written by Sumi Kokoma and directed by Liliana Blaine Cruz is actually a wonderfully co-produced by many theaters. So it's a rolling premiere, meaning it starts in one location, it goes to multiple, and now we're at the end point in New York City. So it started at the Repertory of uh, Theater of St. Louis, and then it was then co-produced by the McCarter Theater, and then up to Arts Emerson in Boston. And when we're back down here, this is a co-production between New York Theater Workshop and National Black Theater in association with the Apollo. And I just want to thank National Black Theater and Octopus Theatricals who have really helped the development for years for this piece. And so without them and their vision, uh, we would not have this wonderful relationship. And so we're stoked. And with that said, we got, we got For the Culture dates coming up. So we have four dates so far and it might grow. We might have other, we might have other events coming up, but I can tell you this, I can tell you this. So May 25th is the first date. It's, it's Black Theater Night, which will be co-produced with Black Boys Do Theater. Then on June 7th, we have a special night with Black Girls Do Theater. And then on June 16th, we're having a co a co night with the Apollo Theater, so it's Apollo night, and then on June twenty third, before the show, we're going to have a wonderful open mic night right before the show on the streets of New York City, right outside the theater. You go in, experience the show, and then we'll have a conversation afterwards. And so, did you did you, did you say the name of the show and who's acting in it? In it, I think those are some exciting pointers. The oh, name yeah, of the yeah. show, who's acting in it? Yes, <laughs> yes, no, yeah, yeah. So we're producing this uh, this wonderful musical called Dreaming Zenzile, uh, written and performed by Somi Kakoma, directed by the amazing director Liliana Blaine Cruz. And this play is inspired by the life of Miriam Makeba and directly dramatizes the night. Her final performance. Um, in 2008, right before she had passed away. Oh. She literally walks off stage and passes. And so using that night as a starting off point, Somi has written this play in which when she sings, she's calling upon her ancestors and her entire life like passes, passes through her in which she has to search for love, reconciliation, regret, and just really dealing with the challenges she faced in life, but then at the end of the day, it is this affirmation of her work, her social justice work, her love for the world, and her dreams of what the world can be through her music. And that's key. 
This is an amazing woman who has used her artistry to change the world and her legacy still continues. And what's lovely is that we're introducing her work and her activism to a new generation. And so this is one of the, those chances, I will say, the families must come. Yeah. Like I, I, it would be a miss if a young person, that 10 year old, 10 year old kid does not see this play. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God, this sounds so exciting. Hope you have my ticket, Kaylin. I'm not playing. Oh, uh -huh, I got you. Hope you have no. my ticket because I didn't see the show. <laughs> Hope you got my ticket. But before I You'll be sitting right next to me. So oh, okay, gotta... exactly. <laughs> VIP. VIP. Yeah. VIP. <laughs> yes. So before we go, with all of this, you have so many moving projects, so many moving parts of all of this. How do you take care of you, Gavin? How do you self-care and take care of you with all of these moving parts and everything that you're involved in? Oof. Mm. Ooh. Mm. I'm calling okay. you. You know I'm what calling, I've been I'm calling you out. I'm calling you no, out. No, no, no. You're, no, that's a really so you know what I've been doing. First, I, I I go to therapy. I go to therapy every week, and that has been quite lovely. And in addition to that, I write poetry. I write poetry for myself. And so that has been quite a, a, a new way for me to just channel the world as it passes through me. And then I read it aloud. I sometimes read it to my therapist and I feel, I feel good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. You just, self-care is very important and we want to make sure that we're maximizing that as people of color we're doing this work yeah. and getting the word out. So yeah. before before you go, where how can they reach you? How can they reach you, and where can they get more information about the upcoming events? Of course, you can always reach me through social at New York Theater Workshop. So it's at nytw seventy nine. That's Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. You could always go to our website nytw.org and go through the staff list. If you want to email me personally, my email is there listed on the website. And also if you want to find a way to collaborate, whether it's on a show and outreach or community engagement or education programs, do not hesitate. Or if you just simply want to know more, please. Um, also, if you're interested in community engagement or dramaturgy and finding the ways to meld those things together, I always like a good conversation. And so come at me with those emails, those requests, outreach. And so, yeah. Thank you so much, Gavin, for being on the show, The Blueprint Series by Real Event Productions. We want to have more of these conversations. And thank you mm. for facilitating this wonderful conversation. And we're going to be in touch. Thank you so much, Gavin. No, Aisha, I thank you. Thank you so much. This has been such a joy. And also thank you, Real Event Productions. You have all been so awesome. Thank you. And I hope I see you all at the theater. We'll be there. Yeah. <laughs>loved about Dreaming Zenzele was just the spirit of Miriam Makeba being right there on the stage. I think they did a phenomenal job of telling the story of her life. It was so bold and thoughtful and wildly entertaining. And so powerful. The history, the music, the emotion woven together so masterfully. It all hit me like a, a wave. Watching you cock was on top of I've literally been waiting for someone to create this show. Marion Makiba is a hero of mine. The performance is amazing. The power of the music, the story, and the relevance to today's world. The music just carried forth and brought everyone's heart into the room, and I wish everyone could see it. Say yes, say yes, say yes. Oh my God, what an exciting conversation with Gavin. Guys, so it's time to make sure we're at the theater. So Africa Everything is going to be attending Dreams of Zinzile with all of us and we want you to come with us so make sure you are looking out for us on either new york theater workshop Rillaman production and africa everything we're going to make sure we're listing that hashtag attend with us guys make sure you're following all of these different um social media um channels so that you can find out when the shows are coming up when the workshops are coming up and you know what i'm going to end this here we build together let's come out and show them that we are also the theater.
Real Men Production Blueprint Series. Make sure you stay tuned for the next one. It's Aisha. It's time for joy. It's time for sisterhood. It's time for all to experience for colored girls. This April on Broadway, resilience blooms into passion, poetry, music, and dance that explodes off the stage in this reinvention of the iconic masterpiece. Fearlessly new, fiercely now, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. 20 weeks only, get tickets today and join the celebration. Oh my God, I'm making my Broadway debut at Lincoln Center Theater. I am Liliana Blaine Cruz. I am the resident director at Lincoln Center Theater and I am directing The Skin of Our Teeth. I am over the moon. It's actually like I alternate between like, woo, the sense of like excitement, just real, real, um, real gratitude for the opportunity to work on this show not only at like the home that is Lincoln Center Theater for me but also on this scale that I've been longing for for a really really long time. Let's talk about the end of the world folks! <laughs> the Skin of Our Teeth is described as being about the everyman and so I wanted to challenge what our normal perceptions of what the everyman is or who gets to occupy that space and I think it's also about you know a family on the brink of destruction over and over and over again. And so for me in America, thinking about the everyman and thinking about a group of people who have been on the brink of destruction, a black family felt to be at the center of that. And that felt significant to me to want to see them as a unit, to see them in a loving you know, space and to also see them at odds with what seems to be the enormity of catastrophes of the world over and over again. Because I think we have seen that, we have lived that. So to watch that through their perspective, I think adds a level of urgency and poignancy that I think is already inherent inside of the play. This question of survival and who gets to survive and what does it mean to survive? What does it mean to be, or to feel on the brink of extinction and then yet to pick up and start again feels particularly moving to me through the lens of this black family. And yet this black family is also an American family and it's also a world family. And that world family, you know, begins to the beginning of time to the first man and the first woman and that for me is really thrilling to be reminded, you know, of the origins of people and the origins of the continent. There's more than three words to describe this production of The Skin of Our Teeth. Thrilling. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, and devastating. All at once. Yes, like the, 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 all of the human emotions you think you can possibly feel all combined into one massive. And the skin of our teeth provides this kind of amazing, glorious answer slash non-answer to that question of human existence. I think at the end of the day, I want people to leave the skin of our teeth feeling alive <laughs> and gratitude for life, right? Like the show that's about the end of the world over and over again is in some ways a celebration of survival. society and held the promise of what America could be. Paradise Square is the musical for our time. When the days are hell, nothing can compare to the little bit of Eden. Oh, Paradise Square.
Oh, oh, oh.